Hi. We're starting a whole new season and putting these in little capsules so um, they're more digestible. So this is season two, episode one. Um, if you haven't already seen it, there are um, ten other episodes in season one. Anyway, today we're talking about male stripper, man to man. Um, many people know me uh, from Hip Hop Bebop and Boogie Down Bronx and that sort of stuff. But if you lived in the UK uh, or over in Europe, you probably know me more because of um, a group that I worked with and a song I had called Male Stripper. So the story behind that, um, Paul Zone, Mickey Zone, and Mandy or Armin Zone had a group many years ago, which I talk about in an earlier um, episode at Maxis, Kansas City, in New York City, a rock group called The Fast. And they were great, they had pop songs, Mickey wrote the tracks, and Paul was a singer, uh, and so on, and uh, it was a group locally that I loved. But I also knew them because we kind of grew up in the same neighborhood. We didn't hang out in the neighborhood, but we, you know, in the, in, in the clubs and all that kind of stuff, we, we very much knew each other, we were definitely friends. Um, so after I had my record out, uh, I wound up moving back to Brooklyn. There's a whole bunch of stories about, I'm going to put up about that. Um, the record deal didn't work out and I moved back to my father's house in Brooklyn and um, <clears throat> I couldn't pay rent anywhere. I was completely broke. So Paul had approached me, called me up and said, you have a studio and we're doing a little record label. We don't have any money. Could you please help us? Uh, we're trying to put out a bunch of records. And I said, okay, sure. Um, I worked with so many people back then, it's ridiculous. Uh, everybody came to me. I had a recording studio in New York. Uh, and, uh, uh, and that recording studio was an, only an eight channel tape recorder. You know, it wasn't one of those big 24 track record, uh, um, machines that you see like on TV. This was a home bedroom studio setup. Uh, well, I used to do my demos, but wound up being so good at it, we were doing complete full records like Hip Hop, Bebop, Boogie Down Bronx, some of the records you know, a male stripper, man to man, were done just on an 8-track tape recorder in basically my bedroom in my father's house. So Paul came over and I said, look, you guys have to at least cover the cost of the tape because the tape was 40 or $50 for a reel of tape and, you know, I'll work with you. And Paul said, I'd love to pay you more but <clears throat> we're a small record label we're not making any money and i said hey great if you ever make money one day uh it'd be great if you hooked me up because absolutely you know we're not going to sell that many records okay paul comes over with mickey we do a whole bunch of records we did male stripper um uh, uh i need a man energy is euro beat uh something called cuba uh try my love uh uh, there's a uh, all men are beasts. I can go down a laundry list of all these tracks that I did to help Paul and Mickey out. I specifically remember Man to Man, I mean um, <clears throat> Male Stripper, because it was kind of silly and kind of funny. And uh, Mickey came in, and um, Mickey knew how to write music. Paul didn't know how to write music. Probably wrote some lyrics. I, I think Mickey probably wrote the lyrics. I don't know, uh, but they wound up putting a, a, like an, a, a grease pencil on the keys to show me the chord progressions of where it's going. They had a song and, and, and a, um, they had part of a melody and some chord changes and lyrics. And um, so I got to work and I came up with the da 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 that horn line that became really famous and uh, made some suggestions. And look, we were basically writing the song right on the spot. They had a good demo idea, but as a producer, I developed it. But I got a little more involved in a lot of the music and I put in all kinds of um, embellishments and, and, and basically writing the song with them. <clears throat> so, paid me the $50, they went away, they put it out on a record, and it's one of the other, the 10 other records that we did together that he was putting on his, out as a small label out of his house, you know, making a couple of bucks on. About six months later, I get a call from somebody and said, hey, congratulations, your record's climbing the chart in London. And I went, what record? Now, I had already had Hip Hop Bebop 
and Boogie Down Bronx was really big over there. And I said, well, my record was months and months ago. He goes, no, uh, Male Stripper. I said, Male Stripper? I didn't do a song called Male Stripper. He goes, yes, you did. It says on the label, and I'm holding it, uh, the record, Man to Man, Meet Man, Parish, Male Stripper. And I thought, Man to Man, Meet Man, Parish? I never told him they could use my name. And I went, you know, he licensed the record over there, and it's starting to do well. But since I had success, without asking me, he put my name on that record to sell records, and now it's climbing the charts. It took me about three weeks to hunt him down and find out where he was. He was, uh, I think I found it finally through the, through the record label, and I, th I think he was in the office, or they called him into the office, or I got his home number over there because he was living there at the time. And I'm on the phone with Paul, and I said, hey, Paul, what's this record that's like number four on the pop charts, um, Male Stripper? It, uh, you used my name. And he, and he says, oh, yeah, I was meaning to tell you that. I said, meaning to tell me that? You're selling, you know, the record went gold or something like that. When were you going to tell me? Uh, oh, yeah, well, I've been really, really busy. And I said, Paul, you got to do something. You know, you're selling records on my name, and this is not fair. Well, why don't you come over to London? I want you to mix uh, Energy as Eurobeat. The record label will pay for it, and we'll work everything out. I said, no, Paul, I'm not, not going over to London until we work something out. And he said to me on the phone, and I remember quite clearly, don't worry, we'll split everything since your name is on it, too. And I thought, okay, now we're getting somewhere, okay? You know, thanks for not letting me know, but I'm playing along and trying to be the good, you know, an okay guy here. Get on the plane, go to London. There's a hysterical story that I have about me getting off uh, the plane and the record company guy uh, said that I was sleeping with Madonna and there's a whole other little, um, the, ep it's, it's season one, episode two or three where, I was on the front covers of the world's newspaper as sleeping with Madonna. So uh, we wound up meeting with Paul, mixing Energy's Eurobeat, and during all that, I'm out doing these interviews, and Paul didn't seem to really like the fact that I was getting a whole lot of attention, but I already had two records out. They did Top of the Pops, Man to Man, Meet Man Paris, you can Google it, without me even knowing it, you know? I mean, anyway. So uh, I remember one night, uh, we went to the limelight and it was a celebration. They had given us plaques that the record, uh, you know, was silver or gold or something like that, sold whatever, thousands, hundred, you know, 50, 100,000 records, whatever. And uh, we were standing around the limelight in the VIP area and we're all like in a little circle and thank you for making my record so great. And I'm thinking, your record, you know, I'm standing here, hello, me too, hi, I'm part of this. And handed out champagne glasses to everybody. And Paul, I think, may have been angry that I had all that attention from the Madonna and literally poured glasses of champagne, skipped over me and went to everybody else and did a toast. And I'm standing there like, Am I effing invisible? Like, what? Seriously? Um, so at that time, I knew he wasn't going to honor his verbal deal with me on the phone. Um, but I did get to meet Tom Jones that night, who was a little little midget guy. And Pete Burns from Dead or Alive was there that night, too. And he kept telling me how straight he was and how into girls he was. And I'm like, Pete, you look like a drag queen. I don't care what you do, but you know, cut it out. I don't need you to constantly tell me how straight you are and how into women you are. It's like, oh, what a mess, poor thing. Um, but I, I went back to the hotel room and I was really furious that Paul was um, going to screw me, basically. So the next day he played at the Hippodrome in London. And the Hippodrome kind of had a, a modern stage with these small semi-circle, um, uh, small platforms. I guess you could, there was the main stage and above it there were these small little mini stages suspended against the back wall, like half circles. And they had, um, you could put a band up there or background singers if you wanted to get creative with your, with your set. And I thought, you know, I can't take this anymore. You know, Paul's getting all this attention and basically ignoring me, you know. 
and I and, and my name's on this record, and he's making all this money. So uh, he went on stage, and I got up into one of those. Uh, it, it was like a, a small stage up there, had a curtain, and I pulled one of the stage hands with me. I said, when I tell you, uh, and the curtain was see-through, when, when I tell you, I want you to open this curtain. And Paul was singing on stage, and the audience was packed because we, we all these people. And I turned, I said, now, I turned around, and I pulled my pants down, and I showed my ass, like mooned him, and I closed the curtain. And the audience started screaming, and Paul's like trying to figure out why everybody's laughing, and he sing, starts singing again. And I said, now, open the curtain. And I show my ass again, close the curtain. <laughs> and I'm up above him, mooning him like, you know, F you for, for, for screwing me up. And this went around three or four times. And Paul's totally flipping out, trying to figure out why is the audience laughing at him. And uh, finally, the curtain wasn't synchronized right. And he looked up behind and he saw that I was mooning him. And he goes, I don't know if the song stopped or right in the middle, he goes, oh, that's my fat queen producer man parish. So from then on, it was rather, sh you know, strained relationship, you know, let's put it that way. Uh, I went back to, uh, to New York by myself. And then I found out later to add insult to injury, they, had, they needed another record to follow up Male Stripper. They did a song called At The Gym. So instead of Paul paying me uh, to do their next record, he went to Jacques Morelli, which is the um, producer from the Village People, and he paid Jacques, I think, twenty thousand dollars. He said to do the record, ten or twenty thousand to do the record, and another twenty thousand to do a video. He put thirty or forty thousand dollars into this song, or the record label did, which was his money, uh, instead of hooking me up, because I gave you this this record, you know. And Paul doesn't play music, you know. I doubt even knows what a, a minor chord is, you know, finger-wise on it, or seventh chord. So um, that was pretty low, you know. Uh, uh, then I found out later on he bought his uh, apartment. It was down in the East Village off of Christopher, between Christopher and Grove Street. I don't know if that's Bleecker or something. There's a small, not Bleecker, the next one towards uh, Hudson Street. He got an apartment in later. Uh, told me he spent $150,000 or something like that to buy his condo, his small one-room studio apartment on Bleecker Street uh, in, in the village. And I thought, really? Really, you made that kind of money and you didn't even throw me $10? So our relationship was and has been really weird, you know, since then. I had actually done a few records after Mail Stripper with Paul because I was under the assumption that he was gonna pay me. Cause I know sometimes record labels take months and years before you collect all your money, but that never happened. Now, a couple of years later, I confronted Paul on the phone and I said, Paul, I've really had it. My name's on the record. You're selling records and a good chunk of those are coming from not only the work that I did and, and the, the riff line that I, and the production that I did for you for nothing, because that $50 paid for tape, but my name's on there, you're selling records. So um, I said, you need to do something because I'm at the point that I'm just gonna go get a lawyer. So what does Paul do? If you go and you Google the records now, the man-to-man -man record, Male Stripper, no longer says meets Man Parish. Paul took my name, I mean the balls, took my name off the record, basically trying to erase me from ever being associated with that record. Um, that really hurts. That really, really hurts. I mean, if you didn't pay me, at least you could leave my name on the record, which is half my record. You know, if, 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 I should at least get credit if I'm not getting paid. So that basically, it, I know it's just a, a downer, but that's basically the, so, uh, the, the story behind um, Male stripper. Uh, uh, I know a lot of my stories are funny, but you know, not all of them are happy and great. This is uh, something I think you guys should know about, and it's not fair. Paul and I sort of speak, but it's kind of weird and strange when we do. Um, to this day, he still collects records. Now, there's a song by Purple Disco Machine or something like that called um, Dished. 
male stripper. As we're doing this in 19, uh, I mean 2018, male strippers coming back again through this record, and uh, it was picked up by some like EMI or, or, or some big company in Europe, and Casablanca Records, which had Donna Summer, Village People, Kiss, now just picked it up in America. And um, you think I'm getting anything out of that? I don't think so. So, not fair. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. It's been hard for me to tell the story. I was been running this around in my head. It's actually like three or four o'clock in the morning. Last night I went to bed and I'd been sort of awake trying to figure out how to tell this story. And I just figured I'm just gonna tell it all. All right, thank you so much. If you can subscribe, it definitely helps the channel. That little bell button will get you uh, notified when new stuff comes up. If you have been following along, thank you. If you haven't, welcome to the channel. And I've got a lot more stories uh, about this uh, stuff. And if you're into music, I'm on iTunes, Man Parish. Do a search. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks, thanks.